We now arrive at the very important topic of numerical stability. Numerical stability is a property of the implementation of a function. So if you have a function that maps elements of a domain to elements of a range, then we can picture this as in goes some value x, and this gets mapped to some other value on the other side, f of x. Now, that's the function you know, when you do exact arithmetic. But we know that when we implement an algorithm on a computer, you may not end up implementing the exact function. Round of error could occur, or you might even introduce a bug. So, your implementation will take the same value x and will map it to some other value using your implementation, an alternative function, f check. Now the question becomes, when do you have a good implementation of your function? And if you look at this, I'm kind of purposely made the outputs far apart. You might say, well, that's pretty obvious. If I put in x into either of these functions, I should get a result that's very close by. Well, yeah, but sometimes you can't do that. Because if the function is very sensitive to small changes, if its conditioning is bad, if it's ill-conditioned, then a small change in the input may result in a large change in the output, regardless of how good your implementation is, because you know you're going to incur error along the way. There might even have been error in the input when you measured it. So, how do we quantify that we have a good implementation? Well, if we can show that for a value close to x, let's call it x check, we actually get the exact same value as our computer implementation did when we map it under our original function f, then we know we're doing about as well as we can because small changes are going to happen, either a small change in the input when you measure the data or when you input it into the computer and you store it as a floating point number, or while you're evaluating your expression that is your function, and small errors occur along the way. Okay. So, an implementation that has the property that the result that you compute can be attributed to an input that's close to the input you started with is called a numerically stable algorithm. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at various operations that we have encountered in linear algebra and analyze whether we can prove that the algorithm has the property that any computed value can be attributed to a, an input that's close to the original input. And that's called backward error analysis.